Hi, Jürgen. Hope you're well. I am. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to start with the team news, actually. Uh, I just wonder, is Curtis Jones ready to be part of the squad? And what's the latest update on Thiago when you might expect to have him back? Uh, Curtis will train today with us completely. He trained already, was part of parts of training last before we went to Atletico. So um, he should be in contention. Um, Thiago, not. He was not in team training yet, will not be. Um, um, this week for sure is running meanwhile so that's a good sign um i think it's only it's this week and then the next week and then we have international was well, two weeks two and a half weeks so so i'm not sure maybe maybe it's before international or, or for sure after international break that's what we expect um but we will see obviously a big game in terms of the rivalry between the two clubs and a big game that impacts uh, the title race positions as well. But Paul Scholes said after watching United in midweek, Jurgen Klopp watching that game will be rubbing his hands together. Obviously, at the prospect of what Liverpool could possibly do given United's performance in midweek. So just how accurate was that assessment by Paul Scholes? Uh, I was together with me when I watched the games. So I didn't. There was not one second when I, when I was rubbing my hands. I can't say that. Um, there was no reason for it. Um, if you if you watch the game, then you obviously could see that um, um, Atlanta cost cost United in the first half uh, some problems. But even in that half, I think United had three clear cut chances in one one situation on the goalie. So with all the things, so in the second half was a pure power presentation of um, of United they, they went for it and with the quality they have and with the quality they have they can cause then energy problems um, especially when you stop playing football but obviously Atlanta did a little bit um, so no I was on wrong hands and I, um, I've not uh, I prepare the team for a tough game against an exceptionally a really a really good opponent so I don't prepare them now, like for three, four days for Man United and um, Battle of Britain and all these kind of things that uh, we be are long enough together that we all know the importance of this game. We prepare them for a football team, and that's a really good football team they have, and that's it. And it's an away game as well for us, so it's a home game for them. So that's what we do. Um, finally, for me, Jürgen, obviously you've spoken before about uh, wanting to be part of, of, of big games like this. It's one of the reasons for, for being in the, in the position that you are. But uh, Mikel Arteta spoke about the treatment of Steve Bruce this week. Um, and he says that the, the treatment of Steve Bruce is putting potential managers off. What do you think? Sorry, which treatment? The, the I, treatment I, I, in I, terms I, of criticism, um, abuse from certain sections as well that, that Steve Bruce has suffered. Um, you know, Steve Bruce spoke pretty openly about the impact that it's had on himself and his family this week. And uh, Mikel was, was reacting to that and saying that it's that kind of treatment that puts potential managers off coming into the game or, or even players staying in the game once they've finished their playing career. That's all. Uh, social media or, or, or what is yeah, social, it? Yeah, a mix of it all, social media, I suppose, criticism from the media as well. Don't read it, don't watch it, So, and especially not in, in, in average or bad periods. I think that's the best advice you can give to every manager in the world. So I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry for Steve uh, if that happened and he obviously, when he when he responded to it, then he obviously got aware of it. So um, I I'm I think that's the, the one of the most important skills in in modern football for a manager is either way not to let criticism too close to you to get too close to you or just ignore it that's what i do by the way and i i'm and you so far in my career i never um felt um it may be like 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 bruce you felt it now I don't know, but it's that's the that's the situation, and um, the world is like this. Everybody can say what they want, and that's fine for me because I don't read it. But if you read it, then it might hurt. So that's possible. I, that's the part of uh, communication or social media communication via social media. I don't understand. So there are always two parts. If you 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 read it, uh, they you say it, and that's obviously possible. And they say bad things out there, not only about managers, about the world, about all big decision makers and on this planet and stuff like this. And then you need somebody who reads it. If you don't read it, it cannot harm you. So that would be my advice for young managers. And then you can do the job pretty well and pretty well.
you, Vinny. We go to Hugh for two from Premier League Productions and then to Juliet from the BBC. Hi, Jürgen. Um, Alison Hi. had something interesting to say after the Atleti game about the fact that you said just what they wanted or they needed to hear at half time in that game. I don't know if it's a, a, an English obsession about rousing speeches at half time, but it seems to me that they're kind of old fashioned. Do you place a great value in, in what you say at half time and how you say it? Yeah. Oh, I have no, not a massive, not a biggest influence on my team, obviously, during a game because it's very loud. The statement was in the Vanga Metropolitano. It was very loud. Uh, Pep Linders was constantly talking to me and I understood pretty much like 10% and we were next to each other. So you don't, you are not that influential during a game. You can, it's more visual. <laughs> oh, the boss looks, doesn't look happy or whatever. Um, so yes, uh, I think it's very important that we say the right stuff in the right moment before the game in half time and if you can reach out to them then during the game as well but that's my job obviously to analyze the things in the in the right way and um and to tell the boys how we can keep going or what we have to improve or how we can use the, the information we got in the first half that's the job one of the reasons i asked that is because you might have a very different first half manchester united to a second half manchester united based on what we've been able to see from them recently. So is one of the messages to your team this Sunday, be aware of their ability, certainly their recent ability to resurrect themselves from a difficult position? Yeah, no. Didn't think yet about what I would tell the boys, actually. Uh, but come on, we all know. We all know how the world in football is. Um, and they won all that game. Um, but this is... Um, United Liverpool is a massive game, obviously, we know that. And I think Man United is not overly happy with the results they get got so far, but we all know that they are able to do incredible stuff. So that's how it is. We saw it already. Um, so um, we try to focus mainly on ourselves. But of course, if you ask me about half time talk now, not all, and then, yeah, the game is over after the final whistle, not after that, the whistle after 45, 46 minutes. So um, we know that. But I might mention that, but it depends to the, um, on the result, obviously. Okay, we go across the room now. We go to Juliet, then to James from Talksport, then to James from BBC Merseyside. Jules first. Yeah, again, just picking up on on what uh, Hugh was saying, the fact that United do seem to dig deep when things are looking dire, sort of digging out those results. We saw in midweek, Hugh called it a dirty three points. You know, the ugly wins, they're the most important. Uh, will the intensity of, of midweek, you know, be in the mind of both managers and sort of have a sway in the performance that maybe we'll see on Sunday with, you know, perhaps, um, you know, team selection and energy levels because of the shift that, that both teams had to put in in midweek. Oh, we play Tuesday and we play on Sunday. We don't have to think about that. No, I don't think United Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday has to think about that. Wednesday, Saturday could have been our problem at, at, at Atletico. We had a lot of problems, obviously, one is opponent, but it was a massive problem. We saw that. <laughs> They had the weekend off before, so they yes they played the ten man, but of course they had a completely different energy than we had could have in that game, and um, so we fought through that. That's how it is. But we came through it. Um, that's good. And now we recovered for the last two days, and now today we start preparing the game properly, and uh, that's exactly how it should be. No, no consideration because of the intensity of the last game for us at least. Okay, we got James from Talksport. Jürgen, two of the best in the world in, in action this weekend with Mo Salah and Cristiano Ronaldo. They're both brilliant goal scorers, but how do they compare as players? I never thought about that. Why, why should you compare Cristiano Ronaldo and, and, and Mo Salah? So obviously, both are world-class players, so that's how it is. Um, and I would say... Even when Ronaldo's right foot, uh, left foot is not that bad, but I would say most left foot is probably better. Maybe um, then Cristiano is in the air slightly better, and the right foot is probably better. So, <laughs> but um, speed-wise, they are both pretty quick, um, very desperate to score goals. So maybe that's it. But I really never thought properly about that, and not too interested in it. Sorry. Okay, fantastic. The James from the BBC Mersey side, and then we will finish with Pat from uh, TV Two Norway. This section, I should say. James. Hi, Jürgen. Um, you've got 30 goals in your last nine league and cup outings, home and away. I just wonder, when you're scoring so many goals, what does that do 
uh, for the confidence, not just the strikers, but for, for how the whole team plays? I, it helps, obviously, but it's not now that we start, but that we uh, you know, in a situation where we just rely on our goal scoring, scoring skills and think we score anyway, so we can concede two because we always score three. Um, no, it's had nothing to do with it. It's more a coincidence that we score that often. Um, it's just uh, we, we, we create chances and score, but in a row, it's quite strange that we did that. Um, I know that. Um, but we don't re rely on it, and I love winning a football games with one or less one nil as well so that's completely fine for that we need to keep a clean sheet which would be a good idea for the united game anyway um but yes scoring goals is good for confidence but relying on that is already the, uh, the first step in a completely wrong direction so um i think i this gets mentioned now quite frequently in the last few weeks obviously that we scored a lot of goals we never felt it we never thought about it and that's how we thought we continue dealing with it um, because nobody knows how often you score in the next game. Hopefully you do and hopefully you don't concede. That gives you a good chance to win. Terrific. OK, pair for the final question. And I've got two hands up for the dailies. I can probably take one more and then uh, that'll be the next section. But pair to finish this, this open section of the press conference off. Hi again, hope you're well. Uh, I am, hi. Maybe you answered this before, but I wanted to ask you anyways. Uh, earlier this season, all this suggested that the comment you made uh, about Man United's penalties after the Southampton game last season has influenced the referees and, and made it more difficult for them to get penalties. What's, what's your take on that? Nothing. Nothing really to say about it. I think when Ole said it, in between what I said, and when Ola said what he said, they had five penalties, we had two. No, <laughs> still, even, and we all know, come on, that the refs are not. We, I, they, they, we cannot influence refs by things like that. But having the amount of penalties that United had before that was quite exceptional. They are good, they go in a the box, they, they have these kind of situations. Um, but we have them as well and got not even the similar. Of that's how it's just facts who cares it's done and um yeah nothing else to say about it thank you for that.